Hey folks, and welcome back to Phuket. If you remember from our last episode, we had just started uh, exploring Batong Beach. We just got our motorbike. It was the morning of day two of our trip, and it's only a couple minutes after then. I guess it's maybe 10:30, 11 o'clock by now. We had left Batong, headed south, and over that hill, that big hill you see right in the front there, we came over that hill, and we saw this lovely beach. And this is called Karen Beach, Karen or Karan, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, you guys will let me know, but we thought we'd stop here. It looked like a very nice beach, the tide was mostly out, so uh, we'll stop here and that'll be our first trip of the day. We're just out riding around and seeing what we can see. I, I think one of the things that makes this different right now and why it's suffering more than like Pattaya is its proximity to Bangkok like where I live in Bang Sen it's packed on the weekends <laughs> really that town's fully recovered it's back to normal totally there's just a normal amount of business nothing's closed Pattaya they're they're eking by they're they're squeaking by they do have some domestic tourists but Phuket is basically the long driver. You're gonna fly down like I did, but that, that's a lot more inconvenient. And for a weekend, two, three day getaway, I think people are opting for the, for the places closer to Bangkok, the easy accessible places. Probably Chai Am and Hua Hin are doing okay, I would guess. They're a lot closer to Bangkok than this. This is just so far out of pocket. It's not getting that little, that little boom of domestic tourism to kind of keep it afloat like some of the other areas and it's, it's quite evident on the beach but we're we're out looking around today there's a great big there's a great big boot up on the hill we saw V wants to go up there if I could find it uh, it's huge it's a great big white boot that sits on top of a hill and we're just out looking around, seeing what we see. If we can make it up there, we'll go up there. If not, we'll see something else. I gotta get a haircut. <laughs> so yeah, no particular place to go, but you know, V did see that big Buddha on the hill and I don't think she's ever seen a Buddha on a hill that she didn't want to go look at. So we, I think we found our way up there. We did find a road going uphill and the proximity of this thing. So it was a, quite a long windy road and we came around uh, one of the bends finally and to our surprise we found this so yeah they had a whole herd of elephants up here looks like they were feeding them and had them had them fitted up to give rides at least that's what I thought but we weren't really in an elephant riding mode we we kind of wanted to know where we were and if if we were actually on the right road to go to that big Buddha because there was this other road back here and of course I wanted to know where that one went so we stopped and talked to these folks. So yeah, V asked for some quick directions. I thought that was nice until I figured out she's potentially getting directions from a two-year-old. So we just plowed on forward and continued on up the hill. V has to wear a sarong because women aren't allowed to have shorts. They said my shorts are okay. I got on shorts, but they're like they're like down to the knee. They said they were okay. So just V had to wear one, but, but they gave it to her for free and then she'll just return it. And no admission to get in here for foreigner or Thai, just um, no admission, you just show up and you gotta wear a mask and you gotta have on, women have to cover their shoulders and their legs. 
Yeah, while V's taking care of the religious end of the attraction here, I'll go ahead and walk up the steps and check out the big Buddha and the view. He kind of sits up here overlooking the entire island, uh, facing east generally. That's the way they have him set up. It, it kind of looks like it's made out of individual stones. Individual stones. Or tiles. I mean, maybe they just put a tile covering over it. That's probably what it is. Yeah, I think it's just like all made of cement, but they put tile covering. But it really, really gives it that look like it's individual stones put together like a puzzle. So yeah, I'll put the location of this in the description below, but it's about 24 kilometers from Batong Beach. Uh, it, it's probably the, probably the closest beach is Kata Beach, and it's toward the southern part of Phuket. But it, it's probably the best view anywhere on Phuket from up here. I would imagine this is the highest point where they built this. But one thing I'll, I'll say, it is hot up here, and V has found some shade. After goading me to come up here, she's not even looking at the Buddha. She's looking at the phone, I guess, in the shade. <laughs> I don't know. It's like all this white cement up here, and you're just, there's, there's no clouds right now. <laughs> And the sun is just beating down and it is just, it's a, it's, we're just roasting up here. <laughs> it is hot up here. Cause I think you get a, a higher albedo with all this white and paint and cement and the sun just reflects right back. And it's like, like we're in a convection oven. So we've seen what we want to see. We're going to go look at something else. Maybe something a little cooler down by a beach and a breeze or something. Or not. How about a hot, humid, dusty jungle trail instead? Eh, there was some shade back here though, but I, I couldn't I couldn't help myself. I saw this road by where we were at the elephants and I thought, oh, that goes somewhere, let's see where it goes. And I got my phone with me so I can always find my location on the map or whatever. But yeah, the road, the road had its highlights and it had its, uh, had its lows as well, lots of ruts and things like that. But it's nice. I just like riding around in these kind of roads and seeing where they go. And I think on this day, we, we did find something. It's not that we found nothing. We definitely found something. As soon as we get past these ruts up here, there it is, a, a farm. <laughs> so we just found a farm, like a farm. I don't know kind of uh, in the middle of these hills up here. They got livestock, they got pigs, they got chickens, roosters. They're kind of in the middle of a jungle here. And I think these ponds over here might have fish. Yeah, I can see the fish. They look like catfish. I think it's loaded with catfish, like a little catfish farm or something. Dicey roads V had to get off at one point. Bye -bye. All in a day of exploration. <laughs> we got rained on on the way back from the Big Buddha. But when we came down the mountain from Katu, I guess it's called, it basically stopped. For Tong, it's not really raining. A little hungry. We're going to have a big meal later. I just thought we'd have a snack. And I saw this. Uh, this uh, place looks like they have some dim sum. So I guess you pick what you want and then they put it in the steamer and steam it. I guess that's how it works. And there's a sign in there that says 15 baht. I don't know if they're 15 baht each or what. That would be a really good deal. So they're like, they're like 20, 25 baht each. And these looks like ground pork with shrimp, ground pork with quail egg. So we'll get it steamed up. So I don't ever remember seeing a, a roadside place like this before. Uh, just a small operation with a guy with a steamer. But as soon as we got back home, we were rolling back into town where I live, about 5-10 minutes away, I saw a similar place. So we're going to go by there and have lunch uh, one of these days while I'm back home editing these Phuket videos. But this is one of my favorite things to have for lunch. Very nice. So it'll it'll steam for it'll steam for five minutes. Huh? 
Yeah, they also gave us some some tea. Had like a little iced tea along with that. That went well. And V ended up getting. Uh, she didn't. She's not big on the dim sum type uh, dishes like I am. She ended up ordering a a soup, kind of like a noodle soup. But ah, uh, they didn't have the right hot sauce either. A note to self: carry my own hot sauce. But it it was better than a blank. I used their hot sauce. They got soy sauce, of course. But it started coming out. And it all smelled very good with that steam and just the, the essence of all the, I don't know, the herbs, just about all that stuff has ginger in it. And I don't know, it smells very good steaming up. There it is. The first couple things are already got some dumplings there, a pork bun, hot gal. Yeah, plenty of stuff. I think I got about eight different dishes. There's only two two of each in, in each dish. And there's V's, uh, there's V's noodle soup. But I also had the... Uh, pork with shrimp there and there's some pork with quail eggs that was my favorite so i think we did pretty good not knowing the area and just stopping at a random place i think we had good luck i tell you i'm really curious now to try the the place like this which i found by me so hopefully be going there in a couple days about 200 baht about six dollars for the whole spread we're both full ah Three dollars each for lunch. <laughs> Just right here in the as you get into Patong Beach. We went over the big hill and then I was hungry so we stopped here. Now I'm gonna try to get that haircut. So I guess this is the story of my Phuket haircut. You see, we spent a good amount of time after lunch riding around Patong Beach and looking for a looking for a barber shop. I didn't think it would be that big of a deal to find the barber shop and I in honest and in all honesty I did find many barber shops but they were closed uh, the only one that wasn't closed the it was the guy's day off and he said something like come back at four or five o'clock or something like that and I just kind of wanted to get my hair cut then I had almost given up when we came down Beach Road and V said hey there's some guys cutting hair right there on the side of the road so I'm thinking maybe these are some guys trying to earn some extra money maybe they can't afford a barber shop maybe they can't pay rent so they're just cutting hair I'll, I'll give them some business but about halfway through the haircut I found out why these guys were really here so I found out once I was here they're actually out here helping the poor cutting hair and I'm not exactly poor so I don't really qualify for that but anyway, they've gave me a good haircut with really no intention of receiving payment. But of course, I paid for it. But okay, thank you. It's very good haircut. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I couldn't ask for anything better. But they're taking care of the poor, so I help them take care of the poor as well. Uh, but honestly, so we're going to take a little cruise around the town, and then we're going out to eat. At a pretty cool place, which is right down there. But to get there, I gotta ride all the way around the town. So let's go. So yeah, I had to ride around a little bit and show you like all the stuff that's closed and some of the depression, but just to maintain the integrity of the series, it, it wouldn't be honest if I didn't show you the whole picture. But from here on forward, we're going to focus on the places that are open, the places we can go to and enjoy ourselves, like this one. It's called Kudo, and we're going to have a meal here right by the, right on the beach, and it looks like a really lovely place.
What a wonderful beach restaurant, I tell you. I got a lasagna coming. V didn't want Italian food, she's just got a chicken sandwich or something. Just a beautiful place. We were here last night and the place was really rocking, but I, I guess that was some kind of special event. We had just eaten so we couldn't stay. Uh, we were full and tired. <laughs> but tonight we're ready to eat, but they don't have a, a party going on. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know anything about their choice of table decoration. That's my story. I'm sticking to it, and uh, so don't ask. But anyway, we had a great meal. And here it comes. Look at that. I had the lasagna. I believe it had like a bolognese type sauce. Came with a nice basket of bread. Very, very nice bread. Fresh grated Parmesan. And eh, I'm not going to say it's the best lasagna, but it sure was good. It was a very good lasagna, especially for the offerings that you can get locally here. And boy, I tell you, I made that thing disappear in about two minutes. <laughs> Plus, I was hungry. And on the other side, V had like a, a chicken burger, chicken sandwich. There it is. Uh, she didn't want Italian food. She's not big into Italian, but she loves chicken sandwiches, and you know, she's waiting for two more dishes of ketchup that she'll apply. But we had a great evening, and I think the total damage here with two Long Island iced teas and all the food was just around 1,000 baht. So, yeah, it basically takes us to the end of day two on the Phuket trip. On the next episode, we'll do a lot more exploration, visit some tourist attractions, and, and we're going to catch up with her old friend, Joe. She used to be my neighbor here. We met her about five months ago. She's living in Phuket now. We'll see what, she, what she's up to down here in Phuket. And we still got our big night to have out on Bangla Road, so probably at least two more episodes in this series. we got to cram everything in and get busy here. But anyway, for this episode, I'm going to go ahead and leave it off here. And as usual, thank you for watching. And until next time, bye for now.